Whiskey Cast. Brought to you by Redbreast. The definitive single pot still Irish whiskey. Those in the know, know Redbreast. Blood, sweat, and tears will get you there. That joy will take you further. It's the night before the first spirit still run at Ireland's Waterford Distillery. The hydrometers in the spirit safe are ready. The wash still is working just fine, 24 years after it was last fired up at the old Inverleven Distillery in Scotland. But there's still a lot of work left to be done, converting the old Guinness Brewery to make something, well, a bit stouter. Mark Rainier was looking for a new challenge after the 2012 sale of Brook Lottie to Remy Cointreau left him on the sidelines, and he found it in Waterford. And I came and saw this place on one wet and windy morning, and you just think, well, why not? Uh, um, here, here's a, a 40 million euro uh, um, brewery, state of the art, built in 2003, and then shut down a, a decade later. Um, all this great kit lying here, um, perhaps this you know, would be you know, suitable for conversion to a distillery. It certainly would save a lot of time. Um, you know, all the permissions, and you know, it's, it's all been here. Um, so it's a question of uh, uh, realigning it, re-engineering it. And as you know, the brewing is, is two-thirds of distillation anyhow. So, so um, it, it was a bit of a no-brainer. Diageo closed the brewery at the end of 2013, when it consolidated Guinness production in Dublin after two centuries of brewing at the site. For just seven million pounds, about 11 million dollars, Rainier and his backers bought the place. Diageo left behind more equipment than any startup distillery could hope to have, like a state-of-the-art mash filter that extracts more liquid from the mash than conventional lauder tons. The only thing Waterford didn't have pot stills to make whiskey with. There's a three-year-long waiting list for new pot stills at Forsyth's in Speyside. But Rainier knew where he could get his hands on a couple of used stills. The wash still sat outside Brook Laddie for years as a lawn ornament. While the spirit still was stored in a nearby barn, they were liberated from the Inverleven distillery just before it was demolished after a tip from the demolition contractor. Rainier's former colleagues at Brook Laddie agreed to sell him the old stills, and Forsyth's agreed to fast-track the refurbishment. The Inverleven stills were a great coup because that means that you know, we, we can install them and uh, um, not have to wait the three years that it takes to, to get new ones. So you know, from a year and four days from when we bought this site, um, we are now distilling. So it's a tremendous turnaround. Uh, um, you know, we can get distilling, laying down stocks, you know, you know, really quickly. You guys don't seem to be excited at all about this. <laughs> now this is the calm before the storm. <laughs> the other key part of bringing the Waterford Distillery to life? Figuring out how to make all of this stuff work. Fortunately, John Regan and his colleagues helped put it all together in the first place. In buying the plant, um, Part of the deal was because of the confidential nature of the plant, that the assets, um, a number of key confidential assets were taken off the site and the control system was completely wiped. So while we had all of this equipment and it's, it's highly automated, there was no software to run any of it. So re-automating, the two key things in delivering this, this project in a very, very short time frame has been the, um, the arrival of the pot stills, that if you were looking to get them from new, you would be on a waiting list uh, a significant waiting list. So um, the other key bottleneck in rapid delivery of the project uh, was uh, re-automating the plant, and that's still ongoing. But we were lucky that we had a, a very strong automation partner working as part of the team to deliver that. The engineers weren't the only ones who returned to the old brewery. Most of the people Diageo laid off when the brewery closed are now working here once again. So the wash. Still here is running away into the low wine tank and our spirit still is running 
It, it, it running two stills at the same time. Right? Running the two stills at the same right, so time. Showing off now. Right? Showing off. Uh, but the main thing is we're going low and slow. So. Ned Gahan worked at the brewery for 15 years. Took a year off after it closed to be a stay-at-home dad for his family's three young children. He came back to help get the place up and running, and wound up as head distiller. And it's funny because when we're driving in, they say that's where Daddy works in the water distillery. You know, and it's I'm proud to hear them say that, and they're telling their friends who are four or five or six, and they're salespeople. You know, like the farmers are going to be the best salespeople we have, because they're so proud about their grain. They're going to say, well, my grain is better than the grain down the road and they're going to stand over the grain and it, it's down, down to us to treat that with the best and the most respectful way we can. Not only is Lisa Ryan one of the managers here again, but her father is one of the 46 farmers contracted to grow barley specifically for use at the distillery. Mark Rainier wants to take the grain policy he implemented at Brook Laddie and get even more granular at Waterford. You know, we need you know, 4,600 tonnes, so let's get 46 farmers to grow 100 tonnes each on the 19 different soil types around the southeast of Ireland, you know, for extra diversity. Um, and you know, spread them out so that, you know, geographically, climatically, they're, 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 uh, um, they're not conflicted. Um, and then build a, a big cathedral to put them all in big cathedral of Bali, as we call it, uh, um, centrally, so they can all bring it to that point, dry it and store it um, in the right conditions with, with ventilation, um, so that it can then be taken, you know, farm by farm to malting and then to the distillery. So, it, it, you know, one farm equates, and it's, it's, it's accidental, but it's quite a nice, you know, one farm, 100 tons, equates to one week's distillation and we distill for 46, 46 weeks of the year. So it's a very neat, very neat, by luck, by chance. The next morning, as Rainier's key investors assembled for a board meeting, the spirit still started to flow. The team checked the first spirit coming off that still, and after the obligatory selfies, it was time to make the very first cut and send new make spirit flowing to the spirit receiver for the first time. Back in 2001, Rory Rainier was five months old when he helped fill the first cask after Brook Laddie's revival. That's there. You, 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 you collect it in there. Now, a week from his 15th birthday, Rory Rainier made the first cut at Waterford. The spirit has to mature for at least three years to legally be called Irish whiskey, which means it and Rory will come of age around the same time though he was allowed to taste a little today. In a one. <laughs> Mark, how is it? It's very good, very good. This is our first effort, so, so uh, you know, anything could happen. But, uh, you know, that, if, that, if that's our starting point, that's pretty damn impressive. Very impressive. Impressive engineering, impressive stills. Grand stuff. With the ceremony over and the investors off to their board meeting, the team went back to work. There's a lot left to do before production really begins on the banks of the River Sewer. While this is a day to celebrate in Waterford, it's just another milestone along the way. The whiskey from this distillery won't be sold for at least five more years. And in fact, it'll be a few more weeks before they're ready to start filling casks. Still, it's a good day to raise a dram in Waterford. For more cask strength conversation on whiskeys with the people who make them and the people who drink them, join us each week for Whiskey Cast. In Waterford, Ireland, I'm Mark Gillespie.